Good morning. This is Irish Inquiry. I'm Kieran Casey, and you're looking at Breathing for Life. This morning, I'll be joined by John McKeown, who is a certified Wim Hof instructor. Uh, also, John is a Qigong practitioner as well. He's going to be doing a Qigong exercise later, which you can all join in with. Um, now, yesterday, I mentioned a quote by James Nestor, the guy who wrote the amazing book Breath, um, which I'd recommend to anybody watching the, the program here. And basically, James is saying that that regardless of our diet, of how old or how young we are, how skinny or how fat we are, that none of this matters um, in terms of overall health unless we're also breathing correctly. So John and myself are going to bat that idea around a little bit. And John also wants to talk to you about EMFs, electromagnetic frequencies, which are produced by mobile phones, by modems, by cordless telephones, and loads of other electronic equipment that we're exposed to uh, on a daily basis. So good morning, John. Good morning, Kieran. Good to see you again. You're nice to see you too. You're looking well. Thanks. OK. So now, this comment by James Nestor uh, from the book Breath, one of the things that struck me very, um, very strongly from reading the book is the fact that the medical profession does not seem to recognize the importance of correct breathing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I have, my own doctor is, is a homeopath, um, and I've been with him for 30 years. Um, he's a regular doctor. Now, we have never had a conversation about the importance of of breathing. Um, and I know that that other people in dealing with the GPs, the GPs don't bring up this topic at all. Um, what can we, you know, do you think this is something that maybe parents of, of young children should actually bring up with their, with their teachers, you know, because it's not taught in schools either? No, well, again, it's 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 probably only in the last few years that it's become more people are becoming more aware of breathing and the benefits of it. It probably was far greater in the East. Eastern philosophies uh, had breathing as part of their culture and stuff, but breathing has, is 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 only fairly new. But the benefits of breathing pro properly are unbelievable uh, and very simple to do. Um, when you breathe correctly, you do a lot of different things. One thing you do is you activate what's called the parasympathetic nervous system, and that actually calms you down. So children who, or anybody who's anxious or nervous probably are breathing incorrectly, probably shallow breathing, probably breathing in through the mouth. And it's just a simple change of breathing in through your nose, breathing into the diaphragm, changes your physiology and activates a calming sensation of the body. So that's the simplest thing to, that, that people can do is change the way they breathe. The second thing that happens is when you breathe into your diaphragm, I, I've said before, you've got a heart that pumps around your blood. You've got even three times as much liquid called lymphatic fluid that doesn't have a pump. The closest thing it has to a pump is your diaphragm. And when you breathe into your diaphragm, your diaphragm moves up and down and gently pumps around this lymphatic fluid. And that keeps you healthy. The lymphatic fluid is there to take away any waste materials and keep your body clean. And if it's not being pumped around, then it's like a fish tank. If you don't change the water in the fish tank, it gets dirty and the fish dies. You change the water in your fish tank every week. We have a, 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 a lymphatic system that needs pumping around through the diaphragm, by the diaphragm, sorry, and it cleans out the lymphatic fluid. So there's just two simple things that through breathing, we can calm ourselves down and we can get our lymphatic fluid flowing very simply. So, yeah, there's, I mean, you, totally unaware of it. We, 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 we hear about, about um, people who are afflicted with cancer of the lymph system, of the lymph nodes. So th 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 it could well be that the, one of the, the contributory factors to that is that they're not breathing correctly. They are maybe breathing up too high in their chest. Well, yeah, because and if not, ask, not activating the diaphragm. Exactly. If you ask most people to take a deep breath in, most of them will go <gasps> in the mouth and in the chest, when in fact they should be going and it's real down low. 
And as I said, that diaphragm moves up and down as you breathe in and out and the helps the lymphatic fluid to flow. So yeah, it could be, I mean, we're all not gonna prove anything here, and, and but it, it, they're all contributing factors that you know weaken our immune system. And very simply, simple exercise, we can build up our immune system or help our immune system. Yeah, well, we, we, we can help, though. I think just even the fact that we're having this conversation. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Will kind of inspire, it'll inspire thought in, in a few people, right? They can then go maybe talk to the, their doctor, maybe talk to their teacher. The teacher if they have got young kids, go and talk to one of the teachers that when normal class routines start again, some enlightened teacher might actually look at the possibility of doing a little bit of breathwork session with, exactly. with, yeah, with the kids. It can be done at the desk, you know, and kids love it. Kids love it to, to, to calm down and, and, you know, even even put the head head on the, and just to calm kids down, you, could, you it's a very, very simple way. Um, but again, people are, are, are unaware of it. But the book Breath is, is I got it a Christmas, Christmas present. Um, so it's a fantastic book. And, and again, yeah, as you said, recommend it to everybody. Um, yeah, to refer another another passage in, in the in the book, he actually talks about Native American Indians, and that they were very aware of the the importance of correct breathing, and they were also by by all accounts very aware of the harmful effects of snoring, and they 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 used to closely observe all newborn babies, that's and right. if, yeah. if the babies started snoring they would close pinch the, the the lips of of these infants together so that they would be they would have to breathe through their nose they couldn't breathe through their mouth yeah and because i, I think so you, the, you, you spoke to, sorry for cutting across you you spoke to okay. patrick joan as well uh but two weeks ago that's right yeah, yeah what what happens that makes us change from from nose breathing to mouth breathing and he said it can happen during childhood um that that children if they are bottle fed he says it's affected that if they're if they're breastfed they automatically breathe in through their nose so from that age and if they're bottle fed sometimes they'll gulp in through the mouth and it changes the the mechanisms within the mouth and so they from then on they can start mouth breathing so we can say he said it can happen at a very early age and it's just like you said there with the indians if they saw the children breathing in through the mouth in, in the cot, they would close their lips and force them to breathe in through the nose. So it's okay. just something that people can be aware of if they have children. Just watch the child while it's asleep. And if it's mouth breathing, just and the child will automatically go back to nose breathing. Yeah, I'll get onto the book depository and buy James Nestor's book. He's got a brilliant style of writing. It's not it's not a didactic yeah. kind of uh, what's the academic style book. It's very, very human. And it's a brilliant story. Now, you also said you wanted to talk a bit about one of your specialist areas because you are an electrical engineer, yeah. electromagnetic frequencies. Yeah, so well, tell well, us I, a bit about this. Yeah, well, we've, we, you know, as humans, we evolved in a very, um, in, in a world that there was no, none of this microwave radiation in the air. And then in the last 50 years, it's just escalated. It's everywhere. Um, it's a, it, we have we have it in our house now. We bring it into our house with a Wi-Fi router. We bring it in with cordless phones, and just because you can't see it, you're unaware of it. So, when I do an order of, of a house, I bring meters. I hope you can see them here. And this is what's called an RF meter, and it measures the, the levels of radio frequency in the air. Okay, so if I switch it on, you'll see it's quiet. Okay, now I've got my phone here. Okay, and it's in airplane mode. So I'm gonna change my phone and I'm gonna put it in, into live. So now you'll see, you'll see the reading. So that's transmitting from my mobile phone all the time. Now I'll put my phone back into airplane mode and it goes quiet again. So that's just a very simple demonstration of what these mobile phones transmit. I'll do it again. It's in airplane mode. I'll change it back into live. So you can see, I'll put it back in airplane mode. Now remember, a mobile phone is, is live all the time and it's doing that 24 hours a day. 
So if you have that, I know we have to live with mobile phones. I'm not saying that we don't, but we have to be aware of what's coming from them. So as much as possible, I don't have this on my body. I don't carry it in my pocket. Uh, I mean, I don't put it in my pocket and leave it. There. If I if I go somewhere, I'll bring it with me, and I'll put it down on the table beside me. I try as much as possible not to have it on my body, and I definitely don't have it on at night uh, when beside my bed. I put it into airplane mode. Because and in terms, John, to to ask a question, in terms of negative effects on the individual, what what are the the kind of the, the ongoing dangers of being exposed to continuous EMF? Okay, well let, let's just let's bring it back to 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 oxygen. My, my I always concentrated on on oxygen, getting oxygen to the cells because the ox cells need oxygen to breathe, and and that's really what the cell does. The cell breathes and produces energy that we use for, for to move and to live. Okay, if I last week uh, I what I did I got my live blood analysis done. Okay, and what this is they take a prick of blood, put it under a microscope. And they look at the, the, the red blood cells. Red blood cells should be nice and round, bouncing freely. So what I did is I, ha I held my mobile phone for five minutes. I went on YouTube, watched my favorite videos on my, on my phone, then went downstairs, got my live blood analysis, and all my blood was stuck together. Okay? Red blood cells were stuck together. I went back upstairs. I done three rounds of Wim Hof breathing, in through the nose, out through the mouth went back downstairs and got my blood checked again and my blood was nice and round and free again. So what I will do after this is I'll put it up on the Breathing for Life, Life Facebook page and show people the before and after. So if you just keep it simple, you know, we, let's not talk about DNA change and all that sort of stuff. Let's keep it very simple. These things make your red blood cells stick together. So the red blood cells now are clumped together. They can't go through the capillaries. Capillaries are only one red blood cell thick. So you've got this clump, it's blocked. So now it can't deliver oxygen and nutrients to anything beyond here. And it makes the blood sticky, which is, it, it increases pressure on the, on the veins and the arteries to try and, it should be nice and free and flowing. But when it's all stuck together, that's internal pressure. You won't feel it. But your cells will at a cellular level you will feel so it's kind of turning your blood into like lumpy gravy sludge 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 yeah god almighty but simply fixed three rounds of wim hof breathing and earthing as i said before we sleep on a ground sheet there's a great book out called earthing or there's a movie on youtube uh, uh, the earthing movie watch them it's the same thing um, you discharge your red blood cells by sleeping earthed. We just need to go back into, into trying to live as much with nature as possible. You know, that's really what we, what the, we are natural animals, we're human beings, we're supposed to live in a natural world, but we've created a man-made world full of uh, microwave radiation and we're disconnected from nature. I mean, is it also true, like people could earth themselves if they were to walk barefoot on the grass yeah, I mean, yeah. how long? How for how much time in a day would you need? Forty minutes, to do that? they say, is is the is the recommended le length of time to ground yourself and discharge all the cells. Sorry, I missed that. How many minutes? Forty. Forty minutes. Forty minutes. Okay, three quarters of an hour essentially. There, yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. And you feel great afterwards. You feel the difference. And try okay, and start. Just, just if you're doing it in the park, just walk, watch out for the dog poo. <laughs> uh, yeah. Right. Well, look, I tell you, John, it's it's probably about time for us to, to head over to your demonstration. You're going to be doing Qigong this morning and you were also going to be doing the Wim Hof breathing, yeah? That's right, yeah. We may, I, like okay. to, I like to combine the two. So anybody who, who wants to join in, you'll find <clears throat> the, the, the link in the, in the comments section pinned at the top of the comments or at the, at the bottom of the, the screen here. Um, click on that, put in your details and John, let John take you on a breathing journey. John, I'll see you on the other side. Okay. Thanks. Okay, everyone. Uh, I like to take my top off because we're going to do what's called some tapping. Uh, <clears throat> and sometimes the, the clothing can, can reduce the effectiveness of tapping. I'm just going to move my chair over here. So some of this you might be familiar with. PayPal? 
don't need to get paid for this, it's all right. Um, so some of this you might be familiar with. Um, you'd, you'd be familiar with the Wim Hof breathing technique, but you're probably not familiar with tapping, okay? We're gonna do a full body tapping. Tapping is used as part of EFT, uh, and, and you, you can say a mantra at the same time. We're not gonna do that. We're just gonna 